today we are going to use this data set. In this data set, I have the iron supplement F and the iron supplement V. Uh, the iron mass measured in milligrams of the of iron in these two iron supplements were measured using the salicylate assay, the tucianide assay, the gallic acid assay, and the Prussian blue assay. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is compare these four assays. I will compare if the, these four assays provide equivalent iron masses. So I have to compare these four assays. I can compare these four assays. I may go into JASP. I already loaded the data in the JASP. Uh, you can easily open your data in JASP. It's just you go to open computer files and where your tables are saved, where saved you are going to open. Uh, observe that JASP open, uh, open files in just in CSV format. Uh, Repeat that in the link in the description of this video. Uh, Spread suites are provided as Microsoft Excel files uh, and CSV files. Uh, I already loaded this data in here. Uh, if I want to compare this four assays for the iron supplement F, I go to one away ANOVA. I'm going to ANOVA. And I will insert the dependent variable and I will insert the fixed factor. Uh, the JASP is calculating. Sometimes it could take some time. Uh, JASP provided a p value lower than 0 0.05. So I can say that there is no, uh, I, so I can conclude that this four size provides non-equivalent results. Uh, how could I compare the results obtained with this four size? I can do it using post hoc tests. I do my post hoc tests. I select the size to do my post hoc set tests. I can use uh, Alchus post hoc tests. Uh, in Commander, I have shown that we use the 2K tests, but in JASP, you have this four post hoc tests. The most used post hoc test is the 2K test, but they can use so Chef, Bonferroni, Rome, and SIDAC. You can see the results in here, and you can see, for example, that the 2 cyanide assay uh, was not equivalent to the Prussian blue assay. Uh, I can say that the Prussian blue assay was not equivalent to gallic acid assay, but they can say that the Prussian blue assay is equivalent to the salicylate assay. We hear that uh, the, the five post hoc tests provide close results. Look to the p-values are very close. I can do also descriptive plots, uh, for example. I can do a discrete plot to illustrate my results. He's thinking. He's thinking. The JASP sometimes takes some. Uh, uh, some amount of time to do calculations, but now it is in here. I can I can change the size of this figure. Uh, now the results that you see in post hoc tests, you can see summarized in here. You could see that the two cyanide assay and the gallic acid assay provi provides close results. Uh, I can do box plots too. I can go to descriptive for descriptive statistics, I will go for iron mass in supplement F and the iron mass in supplement V. 
uh, I'm going to here and go to plots and there you go to to box plots. I can do box plots too to visualize my data sets. It's very simple as you can see. Uh, and I have it to split my box plots by a size. Now you can see the box plots. These box plots are split uh, according with their size. The Prussian blue, chilcyanide, gallic acid, and salicylate acid. Uh, so I did the one away ANOVA for the iron supplement. I have done the, the one away ANOVA for the iron supplement F. I can do the same for the iron supplement V. Let me go into ANOVA. I go to do this, the same thing for this iron supplement, and they go to split by a size. Uh, once again, uh, the one away ANOVA shown to me that the results provided by the four size were not equivalent. Uh, if I want to observe equivalence and no equivalence between a size, I can do a post hoc test. I may go into post hoc tests, I select a size, and I can do all these four post hoc tests the Tokay test, Sheref, Bonferroni, Rome, and Sidak. The results are shown here. Uh, the Prussian blue and Tusian LSI were not equivalent. The Gallic acid and the Prussian blue were not equivalent. But once again, the Prussian blue and salicylate LSI were equivalent. Uh, if I want to compare, uh, you observed that this, you observed that the four size do not provide equivalent results. And at this time, you can, uh, you can observe that uh, the, the two iron supplements don't have equivalent iron masses. But I, can, uh, I want to observe it if there is some interaction between a size and samples. Uh, so this data set was reorganized. Uh, I put the iron mass in a single column. And uh, sorry, this spread suite four. I have, I have placed iron mass in a single column and I have placed the, the iron sample in a single column. You have the iron supplement F and the iron supplement V. So I have a, a factor, uh, a factor variable, uh, for example, uh, female, male. And they have in here another factor variable that is the SI, salicylate, Tilsianid, SI, gallic acid, and then Prussian, Prussian blue and salicylate. Uh, I can use a two away ANOVA to observe it if it is some interaction between samples and the size. How can I do that? I go to ANOVA and there you go to, I you go to ANOVA. Sorry, it is in. I go to Manova. Sorry, uh, I am going to Manova. I, I place it in here, my iron mass. And in here, fix the factor. I will put the factor variable that is samples and the size. Now, the Jasper going to calculate my two away Manova. Uh, JASP have calculated my two away ANOVA. Uh, I did exactly, I have done for one away ANOVA, but now I have selected uh, two fixed factors. In one away ANOVA, my fixed factor was just uh, a size. Now I have samples and a size. I have a two factor a size. For this reason, I have a two away ANOVA. I can observe that the p-value for samples is lower than 0.005, 0 
and for a size two. So I can conclude that samples have different idle masses, that their size provided different results, but there is no interaction between samples and the size. Uh, I can do descriptive plots. I will put a size in horizontal axis and samples in separate lines. The descriptive plots also help to show that uh, there is no interaction between samples and the size. As you can see here, uh, I'm going to just take a reorder this graph. Uh, both lines are parallel. This parallel line shows there is no interaction between a size and samples. I'm just reordering this figure to, to get more, more easy to see. Look, parallel lines. If the lines are parallel, you can see that the, there is no interaction between a size and samples. I can also compare the idle mass in the two dietary pills using a t-test. I'm going to a t-test. Now we're going to now I'm going to compare it the idle mass found in iron supplement F and in the iron supplement V. I am going to independent sample t-test. I am going to the to the iron mass and samples. Uh, he calculated to me a p-value lower than 0 0.01. So I can say that both, uh, that the two iron supplements do not have equivalent iron masses. I can, so I can do also a Welsh test that is a t-test where uh, when the sample variation were not equivalent, and they can do a man whitney, te uh, man -whitney test. Now, this man whitney test is very interesting uh, when you have when you don't have a normal distribution. Uh, this three statistic test says to me that the iron concentration in the two dietary supplements are different. I can so I can go to descriptive statistics again, uh, and I can compare the iron mass for samples. And there you have a box plot. I can do a box plot for the iron mass in the two dietary supplements. In here, you have the box plots and you can see that the iron supplement F have more, the iron supplement F have more iron than the iron supplement V. Well, this is the manner that you can do, uh, that you can use JASP for descriptive statistics, for runaway, two away ANOVA and for box plots. Uh, thank you to everyone that watched this video and until your next video dealing with statistics analysis. Many thanks to everyone.